Okay, regarding the second vital sign is the radial pulse assessment. How to check the radial pulse? Really, we had talking, we had uh, uh, talk about the radial pulse assessment previously in the general examination. But let's repeat a few notes about it. First of all, ensure that the patient hand is slightly supinated and flexed at the wrist using three finger. The first two is to press over the radial side and the third finger, the left index, is to check the pulse and you can count the pulse for about quarter minute and then multiply the result by four to get a full minute really now we had 15 beats per minute by four so it is 60 beats per minute the volume should also be checked whether it is good volume low volume or large volume of the pulse the rhythm also should also should also be uh, taken from here and the comments will be either regular or irregular if it is irregular you have to comment that the regularity is continuous that's to say irregularly irregular or it is just on occasion that's to say regular irregularity which occur in bigemini and uh, trigemini after that really you have to check for the collapsing pulse in the following maneuver we had already checked the radial pulse with the left hand now i'll use the right hand using this part of the palm encircling the radial artery just like this and I'll grasp the hand and immediately elevate the hand up okay what do you feel to say that this is a collapsing pulse really you will feel that a large volume of pulse quickly press this part and then it quickly collapsed quickly distend this part and then it quickly collapse if you feel this collapsing pulse is present after that really you have to check for radio radial delay or radio radial inequality you will check both radial artery just like this and to ensure that both radial pulse occurs concomitantly yes they are concomitant after that you have to check for the radio femoral delay you have to check for the femoral artery here as we said it is mid inguinal and should be concomitant with that of the radial artery after that really you have to get an impression about the status of the vessel wall whether they are elastic and soft or whether they are rigid and hard after that really if the pulse rhythm is irregularly irregular you have to check for the pulse deficit how can we um, how can we make this measurement really by checking the heart rate of the mitral area also for one minute this measurement should be taken for one minute and here the heart rate in case of arterial fibrillation with the resultant irregular irregularity the heart rate will be higher than the pulse rate really I'll omit to complete one minute because the patient had regular rhythm but in case of irregular rhythm you have to complete for full minutes and then to subtract the radial pulse rate from the heart rate the heart rate is higher than the pulse rate and to see how much is the pulse deficit for example 20 beats per minute 30 beats per minute and so on in reality when you check the radial pulse you have to have an idea about the character of the pulse really the best artery which give you the character of the pulse is the carotid artery but here one can really estimate or can get an impression about the uh, pulses by geminus about pulses 
alternands. Really, in pulses by Geminus, as we know, each ectopic bead will be followed by compensatory pause and then the normal bead. The normal bead will have larger stroke volume because the contraction at the ectopic bead is inefficient and for this reason the already existed blood with the normal blood of the normal bead will be ejected so we will get an impression of large bead of large bead and a strong bead and of that of weak bead this occur in pulses by gymnas what's about the pulses alternates pulses alternates really occur in patient with advanced um, left-sided heart failure and sometimes after ventricular tachycardia and after frequent ectopic beats this occur and give an impression to the examiner to the candidate that the radial pulse also had normal beat and some beat which is weak this is really difficult to ascertain its presence but we have a maneuver for its presence how can we do this maneuver this maneuver in reality is uh, done with the use of sphygma manometer also with the sphygma with the sphygma manometer first of all i'll check at the systolic blood pressure when you check the systolic blood pressure i'll i'll inflate the cuff till the radial pulse also became impalpable as we performed in the blood pressure assessment and then I'll raise it as we have learned to 130 I'll slow till the till I hear the systolic blood pressure Now I hear the first chord cough sound, the systolic blood pressure, just a few millimeter lower it, few millimeter, you will hear just here, for example, if you have just to lower few millimeter, you will hear that there is apparent doubling of the beat of the chord cough sounds that's to say at the systolic blood pressure at the normal systolic blood pressure only the strong beat will be heard while the weak beat cannot be or it is difficult to be heard if you lower the systolic blood pressure just a few millimeter you will hear the strong beat and the weak beat or sometimes once you get the systolic blood pressure listen to the cold cough sound the systolic blood pressure sound you will hear strong beat and then weak beat this is really called called pulses alternates and it is a characteristic of severe lb dysfunction as we said it sometimes a current patient with v2 or following double beat another maneuver in reality the examination committee may ask about is the uh, what we call it pulses paradoxes pulses paradoxes also performed with the blood pressure first of all i'll check the systolic blood pressure in the in the expiration and then i'll check it at the or at the time of inspiration and in, uh, in the normal state really the patient can breathe in relaxed state you should ask him that he that he or she exhale his or her breath while you check for systolic blood pressure and then to get full inspiration while you also check the blood pressure lower it down and see the difference between first the expiration level and then the inspiration level and see how much normally it is about 10 millimeter mercury if it is more than this if the difference is more than this one can expect that exaggerated pulses paradoxes is a present as I'll show to you first of all i'll check the systolic blood pressure and i'll ask the patient to exhale his breathing as we know i know the systolic blood pressure of this patient 
and I'll ask him to expire to exhale breathe حمادة بس أريد منك تطلع النفس كالآتي من شيك وأقول لك هاي أوكي يلا عشتي ذكر هاي أوكي then I'll ask the patient up to this level I had detected and then I'll ask the patient to take full inspiration هسا أريدك تأخذ نفس أخذ نفس أخذ خذ نفس على كيفك هيك مثلي أوكي يلا هاي هي عشتك about nine millimeter the difference هاي هي عشتك Okay, the difference between expiratory level and inspiratory level is a normal phenomenon. We call it pulses paradoxes. But any exaggeration of this normal status is called exaggerated pulses paradoxes, and it is a characteristic of respiratory disease, for example, asthma, and uh, uh, also may occur in patient with the pericardial effusion, severe pericardial effusion, and patient with pericardial tamponade.